Welcome to Ansel Griffin's occasional series of YouTube tutorials in MATLAB. Today we're looking at regression with boosted decision trees. And just to say, the code is not my own. I got this from here, but I ran it and we'll just do some commentary. But before we do the MATLAB code, let's just talk about the data set. The data set is got from here. It's housing prices in uh, Boston, 1993. And there they've sort of given a screen grab. So columns one to 13 are the X are the independent variables and column 14 is the median value of the house price. I downloaded this and I put it into Excel just there. And you can see here that there's no chance of fitting that data. It's completely nonlinear. It's all over the place. So the chances of doing a y equals x or y equals x1 plus so many x2 plus so many x3, etc., 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 is pointless because it's just there's no pattern. So there must be another way of doing it. And the other way of doing it is by doing a classification which, where the data is continuous. The data is continuous here. I want to classify and we want to be able to work out some way of predicting the house price. So I ran the code and we're just going to go through it reasonably quickly. Just build that up so you can see it. So we tied it up as before. I just slow down there a little bit. There's 1 to 13 are the uh, x variables, the independent, and 14 is the dependent. Now, I'm not going to go through them all because you can look at that at your heart's content. Here we've just, uh, there's the file name. We've defined the input names, they be the x variables, and there's the output names, which is the y. We import the data there into a table. We delete uh, the file we downloaded and the file ID and, and the other associated material. And we have an X, capital X, and there the inputs. And we have the Y, which is the output. We train the regression tree. We've partitioned it there. 90% for training. There we do a regression tree template. We get the model, etc. And then down here where the mouse is pointing to, we get the mean square testing error. And the mean square testing error is found to be so. Now, how well did the actual data and the, the the, uh, the, the decision tree work. Well, we see that now in a second. And to the naked eye, that's an almost perfect fit. So when we use the whole of the decision tree there, you can see that the, the just got there a little bit, the actual and the predicted are very close. So it looks like we've been quite successful in working out a model. Next, we want to do which of the 13 predictors are you know, more important than which of the less important ones? There's the code there. And there they are. And I just go back to here just to remind us of one or two of them here. So RM and LSTAT. So, oh yeah, that's up the top. So RM, sorry about that. RM is number six, the average number of rooms or dwelling, and LSAT is the lower status of the population. Okay, and then say the least important ones, if we just go down here again, are the Charles River, the CHAS, and ZN. Just remind myself what they are. So CHS is whether if you're on the River Charles or not. And ZN is the proportion of lands owned for lots over 25,000 square feet. So those two are the least important. 
there's our predictor importance. We plot the error. We'll have to zoom out a little bit here. There's the training set loss in blue and the test set loss in red. You can see, as you would expect, the more trees you have, the loss will start to drop. Okay, and as you know from various other lectures, or lectures or lecturers, whichever you want, the more trees you have, the better the fit, but then it can be overfitted. So we want some way of pruning or shrinking or lassoing, whatever word you want to use. So we want to reduce the number of trees, but keep the, the actually as much as we can. So there we are, where the mouse is there, we shrank the number of trees used. And when we shrank the number of trees used, we got it down to 128 after shrinkage. Uh, just one thing missing, I'll just go back to here. Um, can we predict a new one? We can. For some odd reason, it didn't come out in the um, there. So if I just run that line there, we'll get what would be the predicted price for the house with these values there. And I've just made them up. The crema 0.06, the ZN of 18.1, the industry 2.35. The Charles River are zero, so I just go out to the command prompt, just run that line, just run that line there, and there we are. The predicted house price is twenty-four thousand, or uh, in thousands of dollars. Okay, so hope that helps. Thanks very much for listening.